You're the answer, Clark. Can't I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. But somewhere out there, you have another father. And he sent you here for a reason. And even if it takes the rest of your life, you owe it to yourself to find out what that reason is. How does that feel to be the man of steel? Um, it, it, it's an incredible feeling, you know? It's a real honor to be playing the role and very humbling. Really? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, you're part of this. It's, it's just a huge thing, isn't it? It's enormous. Yeah, actually, we're standing for a bit in Planet there earlier today and admiring the figurines. Very, oh, yeah? Very lifelike, I must say. They're very cool. They're very cool. It's very exciting to see those. Yeah, how does it feel to be someone whose face is going to be basically everywhere for the next couple of months? Um, I don't really dwell on that. Uh, it's not something you think about. It's the thing I'm thinking about the most is, you know, whether people enjoy the movie. You know, we spent a lot of time telling this story and um, put a lot of heart and soul into it. And so we care about finally releasing it. What if a child dreamed of becoming something other than what society had intended? What if a child aspired to something greater? There's an awful lot of time spent on Krypton in the film. Do you feel that adds to the story? I think it does, very much so. Um, when it comes to the introduction of Krypton, you get to see how alien a world it is in comparison to Earth. And so you get to see the huge difference between the two peoples, and therefore Kal-El's dilemma when it comes to choice. The great thing about Krypton featuring so much, as you say, it does, it does show that in, within himself, even he might be aware of it initially, he's got that dual life inside him. He's always been Clark, and he always knows that he is different. But I wouldn't say there's any sort of dual life or dual role, essentially. There's definitely a dual perspective. And Clark and Kal-El are the same guy. It's just realization of um, origin and birth in Kal-El and the lack of realization in Clark. Of course, there's a lot of Jor-El in it. And I, I couldn't believe when I read that you actually met Russell Crowe when you were a student. Yes. It's some coincidence. Um, it, it certainly is a coincidence, um, and, and quite a wonderful one. One of those funny things that happen. And uh, I, I met Russell, Russell many, many years ago, and um, finally got the opportunity to meet him again when he's playing my dad. Yeah, and it, did he remember you? He did, yes. Really? I, I, was, I was quite surprised, actually. I wasn't expecting it at all. But um, when it came down to me finally asking, me, asking him, me asking him, um, he did remember. I have to say, uh, I was very impressed by your torso in the film. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that must have taken a lot of work. It did take an awful lot of work. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark Twite and Michael Blevins from Jim Jones really, really put me through the ringer and um, I had a great time doing it. Yeah, and obviously you're still in great shape. Is your, your intention to, to keep that Superman body? Um, I'm considerably smaller now than I was during shooting. Um, it's never good to stay in that kind of size and shape because that's the Superman size and shape and there are other stories to tell and other roles to play. So um, to stay that way would make me an inefficient storyteller. Englishmen tend to be playing vi villainous roles in mm. recent times. I mean, and now you've got an Englishman playing maybe the archetypal American. It's just one of those things. I mean, I think the cinema going audience is coming to realize it doesn't matter where the actor's from as long as they can do the job. And um, I think that's a wonderful evolution in, in pop culture. You're scared of me because you can't control me. But that doesn't mean I'm your enemy. And who is? That's what I'm worried about. My son is twice the man you love. No!